Let's learn in this lightboard session about the AKS application routing. AKS application routing will make it easier for you to manage your ingress resources. That includes managing the ingress controllers, the external DNS, and also getting the TLS certificates from a key vault instance. So typically for your application, you will start by having your own application namespace where you will host your application resources. And within this namespace, typically you would have your deployment resources, and then you will go to create your own uh, or the service that will route traffic to that deployment. And this is all part of the application namespace. Then the step after creating the deployment and the service is typically creating the ingress resource. So into here, we would, we would typically go to create another YAML file for the ingress. And now at this point, we would have multiple options for managing this ingress. So first option would be to create your own ingress controller. That could be something like Nginx ingress controller or Azure application uh, gateway. So let's say, for example, you will go with ingress or Nginx ingress uh, controller. For that, you will need to install it uh, yourself using the Elm chart and then you will manage it and you are responsible for that deployment. Now with application routing, you have another option, which is that you let AKS or you let the application routing add-on operator create that ingress controller for you. And then it will be managed by that operator. And with that, you will get Microsoft support for your ingress controllers. So how that works? So typically when you enable the ab application routing in AKS, it will be deployed into its own namespace. That namespace will be called app routing system. And then here you can start first by creating or by declaring your ingress controllers that you wanna use. So you will be writing a YAML or a CRD YAML file where you tell the application routing which type of ingress you wanna create. So we create here typically a resource of type ingress uh, controller. It's type actually uh, Nginx ingress controller as now it supports only Nginx. And once that ingress controller for Nginx is created, behind the scenes, the AKS cluster will use its own identity in order to provision a load balancer that could be either internal or external load balancer. And as I said, this is gonna use the uh, AKS identity. That's the default behavior in AKS clusters. Through the ingress API within the cluster, load balancer will be created. And then depending on what you wanted, a public or internal load balancer then would be created there. So now the app routing add-on will manage that ingress controller. It will also manage how many replica you might need for that ingress controller. And that will be done through using an HPA, which will help to scale out the uh, ingress controller. So that way from the ingress resource, from within the application namespace here, we just specify the ingress class and then we provide the ingress class name that we are created as part of this ingress controller. That way we would have the mapping between the ingress and that ingress controller. So at this point through the ingress controller, my application will be exposed through a public or private IP address. But now I wanna use a custom domain name. So within the ingress, we can configure a host and typically enterprises will go to purchase their own custom domain name, something like mycompany.com. And then they, they might add to you, choose to use path-based DNS or a child domain name, something like app1, for example, dot mycompany.com. Those DNS records would be typically configured through a public or private DNS zone in Azure. So the infrastructure team might provision that subdomain within the DNS zone prior to configuring the ingress. They know that, for example, they need to map the app one domain name dot my dot com to a specific public or private IP address, something like, let's say like 20.0.020, for example. So they will create that A record and then the application team will take that FQDN and then they will use it within their ingress resource. So that's one option. But for application teams who want to own that DNS zone and who wants to have complete control to create resources in that DNS zone, they can do that either manually, again, it's the application team who can do that, or they can automate that task. And the way to, to automate it is by using external DNS. So external DNS is yet another component of the application routing. External DNS itself is an open source project and it's a CNCF uh, project. The role of external DNS is to manage not the core DNS in Kubernetes, but 
the, the word external means here to manage other DNS other than the Kubernetes uh, uh, DNS. And that includes a large number of DNS providers, like the DNS providers from the cloud providers, or it, can, it supports also the Azure DNS zones, which whether those are private or public DNS zones. So external DNS could be configured through a configuration where I would typically link it to a private uh, or a public DNS zone. So external DNS, it just creates a records. And to do that, it will need to use a managed identity. And for this, it will not use the AKS uh, managed identity, but it will use its own managed identity that will be provided by the application routing system. When we enable this add-on, actually you will see that a managed identity will be created by default. Let's call that identity the app routing identity. And of course, that identity should have the right airbag roles, which are the DNS zone contributor or private DNS zone contributor over that uh, Azure DNS zone in order to be able to create those A records there. So from your ingress, you are just tell what is your subdomain you want to use and then a configuration will be done through that external DNS and it will be applied to the DNS zone. Now in ingress, actually you might have one or multiple ingresses using different domain names. So you might have app1, but you might also create app2, you might create internal uh, private ingresses. For that, external DNS actually supports those multiple hosts. So you can specify multiple instances. And here, you can also work with multiple private or public DNS zones, which is very interesting. If you are deploying multiple uh, applications, each application would own its own DNS zone, for example. Great, so now the application is exposed through the ingress on a custom domain name, but we still miss one thing, which is here the TLS configuration. So typically, you would have a TLS uh, certificate for your uh, custom domain name or for your application, and you would configure it in your ingress uh, resource. So what you can do today is that Simply, either you can go to create a secret resource in the application namespace, and within that secret, you can store the TLS certificate, and then the ingress can go to use that TLS certificate. But TLS certificates typically would have a limited lifetime, and you will need to rotate those certificates. And you might also need to use an external solution to centralize your TLS certificates and to enable the uh, certificate rotations. That external system would be the Azure Key Vault, for example. So from the infrastructure side in Azure, you might you would have an Azure Key Vault, and then here you would save or you will create certificates, objects, and then you will say you will store that uh, uh, TLS certificate here. The TLS certificate is in Key Vault. To bring that TLS certificate into your application namespace into a secret, you can again use the application routing add-on in AKS. And the application routing add-on here will use a third component to enable this scenario, which is the secret store CSI driver. Secret store CSI driver is yet another open source project developed by Microsoft within the CNCF community where Microsoft provides the uh, driver for Azure Key Vault. So the secret store CSI driver would use its configuration file that is called secret store, store uh, provider. We're here to have a reference for the Azure Key Vault and for the secret. That way, this secret store CSI will be able to connect to the Key Vault, retrieve the secret, and then bring it to the application uh, namespace. So here, the operation performed here would be get for TLS certificate. And again, this secret store CSI driver, in order to get authenticated and authorize it to get that certificate from the Key Vault, it will use again the app routing identity so again, the app routing identity should have the right Key Vault uh, uh, certificate user airbag role in order to get that uh, needed permissions. I would be clear here uh, about one limitation that we have today with Secret Store CSI driver is that the way it works today, it needs to be or it will need to mount a volume to a pod. That pod could be your application pod, but we don't want to change the way how you implement your pod but the solution that is implemented today, which is not completely uh, clean, and I hope we will get a better solution about this, is that within the application namespace, the app routing will create another pod right here, and then to that pod, it will go to mount the CSI uh, volume. And then within this CSI volume, you would have a file 
containing that certificate. The pod here could be doing nothing, just it's here just to pop up the CSI driver volume which will contain that certificate and then through configuration of the secret store provider where here we tell it to uh, get that uh, certificate and store it into Kubernetes secret and that way that uh, secret store CSI driver will create that secret within the application uh, namespace and the pod will still there within the application uh, namespace waiting for secret uh, uh, rotation. Keep an eye on the roadmap of the app routing. This might change in the future. So again here, we might have multiple ingress controllers. Each one would have its own DNS uh, name and each one would have also its own secrets that could be stored within the same or within a different key vault instance. So that scenario of supporting multiple key vault instances is uh, supported. We're here, can go to define another uh, key vault instance saying, for example, I would have a key vault instance per namespace or for each application uh, project team. So final thoughts about the application routing add-on in AKS, you can do all of this stuff yourself manually. You can reuse those open source components. You can install it yourself and manage it yourself. But with the app routing, all of this part here will be managed for you so that the application team won't worry about rotating the TLS certificates or managing the uh, DNS zones and the A records. A second thought I have here is that today the app routing is using Nginx Ingress Controller API, but in the roadmap there are a plan to support the Gateway API, which is the future of uh, Ingress API in Kubernetes. And with that Gateway API, we'll provide support to the Azure Application Gateway for containers. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.